Greetings all! Today, we will be examining the relatively common psychic type Pokemon Solosis, the Cell Pokemon, its relatively uncommon evolution Duosion, the Mitosis Pokemon, and its rare final evolution Reuniclus, the Multiplying Pokemon. Gelatinous and squishy they may look and feel, but the members of the Solosis family are unique telepaths that can more than make good use of their psychic power to fight back against those that would dare to try and harm them in their slimy forms. Solosis have a spherical beige body form with a crease down the center of their frames, two black eyes, a curl of yellow body material on the left side of their head that acts as the source of the psychokinetic power, and a red diamond shaped mouth. Their entire body is encapsulated in a membrane of green protoplasm that helps protect them against their surrounding environment. Their evolved form, Duosion, have a very similar body form, but in their evolved state, they now have a small pair of upper appendages and a tail. The crease in their form has formed into a distinct line down the top of their head, and the top part of their form has split off to form a second brain that floats above them in the membrane that covers their form. Their final evolution, Reuniclus, have a more animalistic form to them, with two half-brains in the shape of horns floating above and disjointed from their core body, as well as a second pair of lower limbs on their core body. Their arms have outstretched into a string of four smaller pieces connected by large blobs of protoplasm, the first two units on each side being beige in color, followed by orange and red at the end. Each upper appendage ending in a glob of membrane gel with three digits each, allowing them to have more of a physical presence in close quarters encounters. Most Pokémon are like humans in that they are comprised of cells which, when working together, form a large single entity capable of calling each cell into action without having to actively think about it. The members of the Solosis family are uniquely different in that they represent a sort of backwards trend in form. Instead of living as numerous cells working together as a multicellular organism, the members of this family are comprised of numerous cells that simply operate together within giant cells. As such, the members of the Solosis family are recognized as possessing the largest single cells out of all known life forms and are the only cells with their size able to operate independently of other types of cells. At the moment, it is currently unknown why such an evolutionary path would have ever been undertaken, but it is quite possible that these creatures developed in environments that were originally fit for multicellular life forms, but became only suitable for single celled organisms with time. Instead of dying off, these creatures might have simply reverse engineered their entire biological construct to adapt to this environmental shift. Regardless of their true origins, this form grants these creatures some surprising advantages in the wild, particularly the ability to utilize extremely potent psychic powers at a young age. Unfortunately, their soft bodies are vulnerable to damage and do not have much in the way of locomotion, making survival a difficult task against stronger opponents. The slimy cell membrane that covers their bodies, however, provides them some fairly unique protection. In addition to making them relatively hard for predators to keep a grip on, these membranes are extremely resistant against the effects of abrasive weather and potentially even the vacuum of space. As such, both of the two possible base abilities these creatures can possess help to prevent damage from weather conditions like hail and sandstorms. The only difference is that, while the overcoat ability performs the basic act effectively, a greater psychic potential can also grant these creatures the more effective Magic Guard ability instead, which protects them against all forms of indirect damage, while furthermore, those that demonstrate advanced regenerative capabilities break from this trend entirely and can possess Regenerator as a hidden ability. It should be noted, however, that these creatures still prefer clear weather over all their types because of their relatively weak defenses, so it is rare to see them outside of a fair weather environment. As far as their overall combat abilities go, in the case of Reuniclus, their biological states leave them with little in the way of both defense and mobility, and they are not the most gifted when it comes to physical assaults, so most of their base stats are below average for a fully evolved psychic type Pokemon. Thankfully though, their protoplasm provides them a great deal of damage buffering, and they can hit fairly hard with their psychic powers from afar, so their base HP and special attack stats are above average for a fully evolved Pokemon of their type allowing them to at least deal some considerable damage from afar and take a bit of a beating when pressed into a combat role. Solosis are the weakest member of the evolutionary family and consist of only a single supercell in terms of their overall biological structure. While they possess inherently powerful psychic abilities and can utilize telepathy, they are flawed in that they do not learn any truly offensive special attacks outside of what matches their type, and the membrane on the outside of their form is weak enough that a heavy blow can cause their internal liquid to leak out. 
Until they can evolve and increase their power to something worth fearing, these creatures must rely on techniques such as charm and recover to keep themselves alive long enough to escape from predators and opponents alike. Alone, Solosis are easily picked off and are only truly feared because of their potent Psy Shock attack, and the limited mobility can often make them a sitting duck in combat. The only other major advantage that they have over other young Psychic-type Pokémon is their full ability to communicate with others through telepathy, something that will be even further amplified as they grow and develop. Duosion are bizarre in that they are physically in the process of undergoing cellular mitosis. Due to the large size, this process takes a relatively long period of time to occur in comparison to normal sized cells, but will result in their evolution upon completion. While their companion cell has yet to fully develop most of its form, a second brain has already formed within it. The original brain and this copied brain work together as two separate organisms, thinking independently but nonetheless linked together through psychic energy. Whenever these brains begin to think the same thoughts, Duojin gain access to their full array of powers and can quickly become unstoppable on the battlefield, their powers having an effect radius of up to half a mile. Unfortunately, because the psychic link between the two brains is still quite tenuous, both brains often think completely different thoughts as well, causing the host to try and take two unpredictable, different actions at the same time. More often than not, this leaves them considerably vulnerable to attack and can be a difficult issue for some trainers to deal with. Upon evolving from Duosion, Ryu and Nicholas complete the process of cellular mitosis not just once, but in fact multiple times, turning them into a super multicellular organism. Their two ears are in fact the second brain of a Duosion, split in half to enhance and perfectly sync their internal psychic bonds, while their arms are formed from several joined cells. Unlike most other psychic types, evolution does not provide Ryu and Nicholas enhanced psychic powers or greater mobility, having reached their true peak in terms of base stats as Duosion in those areas, instead focusing more on defense, physical strength, and especially stamina as a survival tactic. Though they still might not be as physically strong as other professional brawlers, the ability to deliver a potent hammer arm attack with their evolved arms immediately after evolving does throw many first-time trainers off guard and can help their owners set up a powerful knockout blow courtesy of their psychic attack, which helps as they generally prefer to use their limbs to pummel opponents over their psychic powers anyways. More importantly though, Ryu and Nicholas can generate sonic pulses from their hands strong enough to crush rocks with ease, making their grip particularly dangerous against armored creatures. It should further be noted that Ryu and Nicholas are able to link their minds up with other Ryu and Nicholas simply by holding their hands. In doing so, their brains electrically harmonize, heightening their psychic powers considerably. Trainers looking to specialize in multi-Pokemon battles should take this into heavy consideration when fighting anything other than a dark, psychic, or steel-type opponent. Lastly, it is noted that it is believed that the liquid inside of their body has the power to grant great wisdom to anyone that drinks it. But this is ill-advised as the liquid is highly toxic to everything that drinks it, minus the Ryu Nicholas it actually came from. Despite their awkward looking forms and limited move variety, the members of the Solosis family are unique and quirky creatures that can more than prove to be a handful to deal with if allowed to unleash their true power. It might take a while before they can begin to truly show off their complete power, and take a bit of a detour in evolution at the very end, but it can definitely be said that these gelatinous critters can be worth the wait in order to bring out the most they can deliver in battle. Just do yourself a favor, and try not to disturb them while they are trying to concentrate. They might not mind giving a slimy hug when in a good mood, but getting thrown around by the psychic power and potentially slammed into the ground as a finisher is definitely not something the average trainer wants to experience when dealing with these anomalous cells. Thank you all for watching this video. It is always an honor to be able to speak with you all on the subject of Pokemon in a way that brings me great joy and happiness in my work. If you would like to keep tabs on past and future work, click that subscribe button, check out my work on DeviantArt, and don't be shy about following me on Twitter where you can find pertinent announcements on upcoming work before it is officially posted. Links to both can be found in the video description. If you would like to support my work and help Miguel and I continue to produce more content for you and improve upon our presentation, please visit us at my Patreon page, which you can also find a link to in the video description. Yeah, no. With that, I thank you for watching and I wish you well.